Hi and welcome to the most mysterious and curious mysteries of the ancient world. In this video, we want to take a look at the seven of the most skilled sword fighters in history. Other than maybe the firearm, no other weapon has been essentially as vigorously romanticized as the sword. For centuries, we've been utilizing the sword to settle discusses, both individual squabbles as duels, and public contentions as wars. In any case, the fact of the matter, is the utilization of the sword in fighting has been oversold to us. The sword has a high expertise roof, restricted reach, and restricted flexibility in a battle setting. A significant part of the time, it just filled in as an optional weapon. However one thing stays valid, when it boils down to the standard of cool, the sword actually rules. History is loaded with stories of unbelievable fighters who dominated this troublesome military workmanship. The following are seven of history's most noteworthy fighters. Number 7. Minamoto Yoshitsune, the quintessential samurai. On account of the ubiquity of Japanese samurai movies, anime, and western movies like Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill, when we consider ace fighters, we frequently consider samurai. This is for good explanation. The absolute best fighters to have at any point lived came from Japan. One of the most popular is Minamoto Yoshitsune, a talented blade warrior and expert tactician. Yoshitsune was the child of Minamoto Yoshitomo, the head of the strong Minamoto samurai tribe in 12th century Japan. While Yoshitomo was killed by the adversary Taira faction, during the Heiji disobedience of 1160, a few of his children, it were saved to incorporate Yoshitsune. Since the beginning, Yoshitsune was fixated on learning. He was brought up in a religious community and gobbled up works, for example, Sun Tzu's unbelievable specialty of war. He was prepared in the craft of blade battle and before long became capable. As a young fellow, he passed on the religious community to travel, culminating his pick craftsmanship by dueling anybody sufficiently silly to challenge him. One of these men was the amazing fighter priest, Benkei. Benkei was supposed to be 6 foot 7 inches, 200 centimeters, tall, with the qualities of a devil. It is said he killed 200 individuals in each fight he entered. After his loss on account of Yoshitsune, he turned into the samurai's right-hand man. Yoshitsune later turned into a general of his group, and with his sibling, Minamoto Yoramoto, proceeded to clear out a significant part of the Taira faction and lay out Japan's most memorable shogunate. The two siblings later dropped out, prompting Yoshitsune's disloyalty because of his sibling. What occurred after this is obscure. Yoshitsune's end is covered in legend. Some say he passed on Japan to live with an unfamiliar darling, others say he proceeded to become Genghis Khan. A well-known story states he committed seppuku, Japanese custom self-destruction, while his wild sidekick, Benkei protected him. The monster is said to have remained on an extension, safeguarding his lord. He apparently took out north of 300 champions until he was at long last felled by a bolt. He passed on remaining in the thing is known as the standing demise of Benkei. Number 6. Fiore de Liberi, the medieval fencing master. Obviously, Europe has delivered its reasonable part of incredible blade warriors. Fiore de Liberi, the creator of Bloom of Fight, is recognized as perhaps of the best fighter and fencing aces that archaic Europe at any point delivered. Today, minimal about Liberi is known without a doubt. We realize that he was brought into the world around 1350 promotion, and was in all likelihood brought into the world in a little Italian town called Primariaco. He was the child of a nearby ruler, and his life of relative extravagance implied he had a lot of opportunity to rehearse his fencing learning under a large number of the German and Italian bosses of the sacred Roman domain. After Liberi had been rehearsing for 50 years, he composed Bloom of Fight, one of the most established and during closing manuals in presence. The book is still broadly concentrated on by present-day fencing specialists and hand-to-hand -hand fighting aficionados. Liberi wasn't simply an essayist, in any case. He showed the craft of fencing to large numbers of the imperial houses in his encompassing region. His standing as one of blade battling's greats comes from his many duels. He is especially well known for the five duels he battled against the best fencing experts of the time. Number 5. Donald McBain, the Scottish Brute. Some expert blade contenders carried on with a sincere presence, committing themselves totally to the review and dominance of their specialty. Others, as Donald McBain, simply cherished a decent battle. Donald McBain is accepted to have been brought into the world in Inverness in Scotland in 1664. Today, he is recognized as one of Europe's best blade contenders, however it wasn't generally so. As a matter of fact, for an expert fighter, he got off to a quite harsh beginning. McBain's initial military history includes a ton of escaping from fights, particularly during group clashes. His vocation as a sword contender didn't begin until he got into a warmed contention with one of his senior officials during the Nine Years' Conflict. 
The squabble instructed him that assuming he planned to endure armed force life, he expected to train himself to battle. McBain had a hot attitude and his battling style mirrored this. It was strong and confident, driving his adversary into accommodation. His most well-known move, the pigs pushed, involved dropping to one knee and pushing his sword upwards in a strong uppercut blow. In the wake of becoming famous as a fencer, McBain moved to Ireland, where he opened his fencing school and cemented his school standing by beating the experts of four opponent schools. Incredibly, McBain's school wasn't simply a spot for learning sword battling, it likewise filled in as a whorehouse. McBain professed to have prevailed upon 100 duels, which might be marginally overstated. He continued battling great into his 60s, regardless of having gathered a noteworthy arrangement of wounds during his tactical vocation. Sometime down the road, he composed his life account and fencing manual, The Master Blade Man's Buddy. Number 4. Joseph Bolin, The Gentleman Duelist. Joseph Bolin, Chevalier de Holy Person Georges, was the specific inverse of a man like McBain. McBain was a beast who was likewise an expert, while Bolin was a respectable man who was additionally a fencer. Known as one of 18th century Europe's best blade contenders, Bolin was brought into the world on the Caribbean island of Guadeloupe. The island was under French decide during that time, and Bolin was the blended race, ill-conceived child of an estate proprietor and his African slave. Not at all like the offspring of numerous such associations, Bolin carried on with a favored life. He was shipped off France, where he got an honorable man's schooling. He before long did right by be a proficient violin player and author. Be that as it may, his energy was fencing. He was prepared by a famous fencing ace, and by his youngsters he was at that point a gifted sword contender. He started to become famous after completely whipping an individual expert who had offered a bigoted comment about Bolin's family. This prompted Bolin contending in many matches went to by European sovereignty. He before long became quite possibly of Europe's most popular duelist. Bolin was not only a VIP duelist, nonetheless. He was a tactical man as well. During the French unrest, he told an all-dark army of contenders for the Republic. His army was named the St. George Army to pay tribute to Bolin's prevalence and ability. Unfortunately, this was as yet 18th century Europe. While Bolin continually showed he could better his friends, he was over and over the casualty of prejudice, including two bomb death endeavors. He in the long run moved away from fencing and today is most renowned as a performer and writer. One of his most noteworthy accomplishments was becoming head of the show des novices, quite possibly of France's most regarded symphony. Number 3. Tsukahara Bokuden, The Wandering Swordsman A staple of Japanese stories is that of the meandering fighters, incredible samurai duelists who might venture out from home at an early age, devoted to showing what them can do by dueling other extraordinary champions. Tsukahara is the model meandering sword contender. Brought into the world around 1488, Bokuden ventured out from home at 17 years old, anxious to test his abilities against other blade contenders and fighters. Throughout the following couple of years, he won various high-profile duels with live sharp edges, instead of wooden preparation blades. Over the long haul his notoriety developed and he pulled in an enormous company, in the end finishing in his own school. It is said that Bokuden never lost a duel, and throughout many duels and military commitment killed something like 200 men. It said, nonetheless, that as he matured, Bokuden's desire to substantiate himself decreased and he turned out to be progressively radical. The way of thinking of his lessons, which was in conflict with his peers, was to not go after until irrefutably the last second conceivable. One amazing story recounts how one day as an elderly person Bokuden was gone up against by a self-important youthful contender who wished to duel him. Bokuden concurred and paddled the man out to an island where they would duel. As the young fellow got out of the boat, Bokuden essentially paddled away, leaving the presumptuous youthful samurai abandoned and showing him a significant example. Number 2. Julie Dobigny the lady duelist. Not all extraordinary sword contenders were men. One reason people embrace the utilization of weapons was that they will generally be balancers when there is a uniqueness in actual strength. The sword, for instance, depends on savage strength, yet additionally expertise. Julie Dobigny was brought into the world in France during the 1700 years, the girl of an aristocrat in the court of Lord Louis XIV. She was no contracting violet and since early on turned into a big name, popular for her lively character, astonishing performing voice, and horrendous expertise with a sword. Julie was offered early in life yet escaped the cold marriage in her high schooler years. In a demonstration of high school disobedience, she took off from home and started an undertaking with a fencing ace. He showed her his craft and she was before long earning enough to pay the rent by organizing duels and sword battling presentations in bars. She was not just a characteristic conceived sword warrior. 
Close to this time, she likewise found that regardless of having no preparation, she was a skilled vocalist. She turned into a renowned contralto show vocalist. In the middle between duels, she performed under the stage name Mademoiselle de Maupin. Daubigny savored being a dissident. In one popular duel, she effectively bettered an expert who had at first tested her reasoning she was a man. Her generally renowned occurrence, nonetheless, happened in 1695. She was going to a covered ball when she chose to embarrass the visitors by kissing a young lady on the mouth, considering everybody. Three potential admirers were offended and demanded dueling Daubigny trying to shield the youthful casualties honor. Daubigny handily outclassed each of the three. Oddly, Daubigny resigned from both her singing and sword battling profession in her mid-thirties. She joined a cloister and remained there until she kicked the bucket in 1707. Number 1. Jack Churchill, Machine Guns and Broadswords Today, beyond computer games, sword battling is a remnant of the past in fighting, rehearsed exclusively by gifted military specialists and specialists. So it could amaze perusers to learn of Jack Churchill, an unconventional English official who brought his blade into the ferocious conflicts of the Second Great War. All through his stretch as an English official during the Second Great War, Jack Churchill would not convey a weapon, rather deciding on a Scottish broadsword, a longbow, and a bunch of bagpipes. His partners alluded to him as frantic Jack and his saying was, any official who goes right into it without his sword is inappropriately dressed. Churchill might not have compared a few different passages on this rundown and unadulterated blade battling expertise, yet the reality he endure automatic rifle discharge and tanks while using a sword is clearly a demonstration of some degree of expertise. He likewise piled up the last recorded wartime kill with a longbow, taking out a German warrior with a bolt in a French town in 1940. His expertise with a bow is of some record, having addressed extraordinary England at the World Toxophilism titles in 1939. Our interest with extraordinary blade contenders hasn't diminished, even as the weapon has become undesirable during fighting. The sword stays a well-known pillar of imagination books, TV, films, computer games, and movement. In any case, Tragically, the military craftsmanship appended to the weapon no longer gets the regard it merits. Subscribe for more historic ancient stories. Thanks for watching. See you soon.